first guest sold over 75 million albums and was at the top of her game. Then her world came crashing down when she endured a very public and uh, betrayal and divorce. Now she's put it all in her new book. From this moment on, please welcome Shania Twain. This, this, first of all, your story is, I thought I knew your story when, when you were out there still and we were all listening to you and loving your music. And then there's so much more uh, to it than, because I, I knew about your parents, but uh, when, you, when you, first of all, uh, congratulations. This is, we just found this out. You're on the New York Times bestseller list. So that's uh, <laughs> Just found great. out. That's great news. Uh, let's back up to to your on top of the world. You're you're you know the the biggest selling female artist, and you you give it all up. You moved to Switzerland. Is that right? Yeah. So why Switzerland? Why did you move there? Well, I, you know what? We'd moved to Switzerland before I decided to get off the road and stop, um, or take a break. I guess mm -hmm. I just really needed to take a break. Switzerland was uh, just a place that I could go and be very quiet. Mm -hmm. It's a very quiet place. Mm -hmm. It's very beautiful, and I you know became a mom, mm -hmm. and it was just a really great place to to start that part of my life and and I I saw in the series uh, that's on own and that uh, you talk about um, that you really were singing to make your mother happy when you started singing at a young age it wasn't something you wanted to do but if you thought if you quit that was the one thing that was the light in her life that were you were making her happy yeah it would have devastated her if I'd ever quit music I always loved to sing I had a great passion for music and for singing and for writing. Mm -hmm. I didn't have a desire to be on the stage doing it. Mm -hmm. I was very happy to be in, in the backyard or in my own bedroom doing it. And so it was the performer side of it that I was pushed and forced into. And I never really, you know, I never really did uh, get comfortable enough with it for it not to stress me and, and, and really be difficult. So you get to this part, and, you're, and we're going to kind of jump around, but for those of you who don't know, uh, you lost both of your parents in a, immediately in a car accident when you were 19 years old. 22. 22 oh, yeah. years old. Then you had to raise your, your siblings, that you were the parent all of a sudden. To just, and, and plus, the relationship was very abusive. And so we'll get back to that. But so, so then you, you have a career. You get over that. You lose your parents. You raise your siblings. You are this huge star. You have a husband of 14 years who is... I can't even keep up with you. Is this really my, my life? It's like, wow, this is really... It's, by the time it's, I got to page 72 reading the final draft, I was exhausted. It's, I mean, it's... I know, it's, just it's, listening to you, you know, hearing someone else tell it back to me, it's like, whoa, that is just so much in one lifetime. Well, it's... And, and, and obviously, it's, you know, there's, there's more. There's, it's, I mean, it's just, there's so much that happened to you. And then for, for your best friend, your husband, to have an affair with your best friend, yeah. and they lie to you. you, you keep asking your best friend, is something going on? And she's blatantly lying to you, saying nothing's going on, and it's her that he's cheating with. Yeah, betrayal is really a devastating thing. I, at the end of any marriage is very sad, and it's devastating in itself, especially when there, there are children involved. But betrayal is a little bit... Um, that's, that's harder to take. Yep. I struggled more with that, I think. Yep. Than, you know, in, in the end, that was the more devastating side of it. Yeah, I think, uh, I, I agree. I think heartbreak is, is, I mean, that's enough. It is what it is. We all know what right. heartbreak is. But, but for someone to lie to you and to, uh, um, all right, we have to take a break and we'll talk about uh, that situation. And, and uh, I have more to tell you if you want to hear about your life. <laughs> I, know, I okay. love it. <laughs> all right, we'll be right back. We're back with Shania Twain, and we're talking about... Uh, so, so you're suspecting something is going on with your husband, and there's, there's something wrong. You're asking... And did, did she work for you? Is that right, this woman? Yeah, she was our secretary. Yeah. Okay, and so you're asking her, and she's, what are you talking about? And so how did you find out? And they're still together today? I don't know. Okay, all right. Well, doesn't matter. Yeah. Um, it so, doesn't matter anymore. <laughs> so this, it's no longer my business, yeah. Uh, so this woman uh, is, is saying, absolutely not. Nothing's happening with your husband. I don't know why you're thinking that. And right. then you found out how. How did I find out? Well, uh, it was...
it was Easter time, and we were, you know, the two families spending the holidays together and whatnot. And uh, Fred just called me up after the holidays. Fred is her husband. Fred at the was time. her husband at the time. Okay. Exactly. He's my husband. I know what he is now. About? <laughs> I know he is now. No, no, he was he was her husband at the time, and we didn't have a. Fred and I did not have a one-on-one -on -one relationship at all, quite a formal relationship, really. Um, and he didn't have my personal phone number, for example, but found out how to reach me and called me up and just said, I really need to talk to you about Martin Marianne, and can I come and see you? So he just basically explained that I've been waiting for a few weeks to tell you. I've been hoping that they would tell you themselves. They obvi obviously haven't and I think you need to know, and then told me. How did he know and you didn't know? What, did he catch them or something? How, well, how that's what I said. <laughs> I, I, of course, I didn't believe him, and I, I thought for sure he was mm -hmm. making it up. I wasn't, you know, obviously just deny, you know, denial on my part. But, sure. Uh, he just said, you know, I, I have proof if you want it, and um, I've been following it now for a few weeks, and I've got hotel bills, and all kinds of details. And I don't go into the details in the book, so if that's what you're looking for, you probably don't want to read it. I don't go into the details about the affair because it's just not necessary. Mm -hmm. I talk more about how it affected me uh, and what I've learned from it, really, more than anything. Yeah, let's, uh, if, if you will, we can, um, you can read from that section on okay. how you I'm going to need it. my glasses. All right. I'll listen Tell with me my glasses. It. Maybe I should try yours. <laughs> Don't we look studious? Okay, so, yes, here we go. For the first week after finding out about the affair, I was ready to die, to go to bed forever and never wake up, or to hurt someone. I was ready to do something desperate, but in reality, there was nothing to do but to suffer through it. Fortunately, when you're a mom, the responsibility of caring for your child can keep you going. And that's what is, kept you going. And that's your what son. kept me going. And that is sort of why you wrote the book, so your son can, right? Yes. Did, did, you, did you call this woman and, and say, yes, and confront I did. her? I, I called her up and I said, you know, why don't you come over? I want to talk to you about something. Um, I asked her if there was anything she needed to tell me. I wanted to give her the opportunity to tell me herself without me accusing her. And because really still at this point, I, I wasn't really, I, I wasn't sure that Fred was maybe, you know, not exact, you know, right. might have been exaggerating or something. And she said, no, I really have nothing to tell you. I, I don't understand why you think I would ever hide anything This from is you. after you know that it's I know, happening. I know, yeah, I know. So she's I continuing know. to lie. Of course, yeah, and not of course, but... Um, so, you know, it unraveled very slowly from their end, and it, it, it just, you know, took, took a long time to deal with, and it's a very slow grieving process on my end, mm -hmm. and, and on Fred's end, obviously. So, so we keep, Fred, who was her husband, uh, obviously you both kind of leaned on we each slowly, other. Yeah, we slowly became very, very good friends. We had, a, we had many months of just trying to make sense of everything, holding each other up. It was a very difficult time emotionally for both of us. Uh, I would say he was probably stronger through it than I was. He was a tremendous support. We were support to each other and really found something very beautiful in the end and unexpected. But uh, So now you you're know, married. Now you and now Fred we're are married. married. So it's a beautiful story. So now you yeah. have... I mean, that's... However it happened, however it worked out, you know, it's, it's love which is the most important thing. It is. And, you know, this is why it's not, it's easy for me to talk about it in the sense that I'm, that I'm, that I'm not angry when I talk about it anymore. I'm, I'm not even really confused because it's obvious that life just has to play out the way it's meant to. And, 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 and how can I complain with the way it's ended up? Of course, it was painful. Um, it's more difficult, to be honest, to talk about other elements of my life with the public because, to be honest, the divorce and the betrayal was already splattered all over the tabloids without me having anything to do with it, and I've already gone through that humiliation and embarrassment. So it's almost, for me, I've already gone through that part. 
right. in the public. Right. And and now um, it's just you know it's easier to talk about than than a lot of the other things. And I also part of writing the whole book and starting from the beginning of my life uh, was to put that that part of my life, the divorce in perspective. Mm -hmm. It doesn't define who I am and it doesn't define my whole life. My whole life is a much bigger picture mm -hmm. and writing the book from the beginning gave perspective to that one very difficult time that um, really is just a part of my life and mm -hmm. my whole life. Well, I would define you as a very, very strong woman. Uh, what you have lived through is, is just astonishing. And uh, when we come back, we're going to talk about your childhood, which is that alone is impressive, that, that you are a, a kind, um, happy woman today. So I admire you for that, but, but not to mention all that other stuff. But we'll talk about your childhood after this. We be back. So when I'm talking about the childhood, uh, first of all, you had uh, a very, very little money. You, you were a, a very poor family, and you had three siblings. Is that right? Two brothers and a sister? Five of us. There oh, were five of us. Five of you. Four siblings. So, so, and you're in a tiny place about the size of this stage, and on the other side of a wall, you could hear your father uh, uh, beating, my beating, mother. beating yeah. your mother. Yeah. And you're four years old, and you walk into the bathroom and see your father dunking your mother's head in the toilet trying to kill her at four years old? Well, I didn't know if he was trying to kill her. I, 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 I thought he had killed her. Uh, I mean, they were just fighting, and I don't know whether he would... I, I'm sure he wasn't trying to kill her. I don't even know. I don't know how can well, I Well, it's not a gesture that? of love. It's, I mean, you know, yeah, that's, 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 a, that's not... A, yeah. That's not, uh, you know, he's... he's that, for a four-year-old to, to yeah. come in and see that... And, and like you said, you're confused. You don't know what that means. Exactly. So you grew up with, with that kind of, he was your stepfather. But right. you said in many ways he was very loving and kind. So exactly. when he stopped abusing your mother, you loved him and you, you thought he was a great guy. Exactly. Look, you know, in between the violence, uh, you know, everything just went back to normal. Right the next day, everybody just carry on like nothing ever happened. And that is how we all, you know, how I certainly suffered in silence, and how we suffered in silence by not talking about it with each other. And I know I'm not alone in this. I know there are a lot of people out there under different circumstances, but certainly suffering in silence. They're too afraid to, talk, to speak out. Why? I don't know. It's embarrassing. It's humiliating. It's, um, it's going to hurt the people you love. It's, it's, it's too vulnerable of a position to be in. You're afraid. So you live under that fear. Um, and in silence, and there may not even be one other person you share that with. That could be, um, uh, you know, hiding your sexuality. That could be hiding an addiction. That could be hiding, um, you know, anything that makes you, you yourself feel uncomfortable. And, you know, for us growing up, it was hiding the, the, the poverty, hiding the abuse. And later, that just carried on through my whole life. It's as though I learned how, very well, how to hide how I was feeling and what was really going on. I got so good at it. And the, the more famous I got, the harder it got, the harder I had to work at hiding everything. And the more afraid I got of being humiliated and embarrassed by it all. Mm -hmm. uh, so you know what? Anyway, eventually everything just bottlenecked and I decided that I had to let it all out once and for all and start from scratch, almost go to the extreme of being the you know, the Shania that everybody knows never talks about anything personal, mm -hmm. even in my private life. Mm -hmm. Because even a lot of people who have known me my whole life will learn a lot mm -hmm. about my life through the autobiography. But then going to the other end of the other extreme and hopefully at the other end of it, finding a balance of a really healthy way to express myself. And it's, it's not an easy thing to do, but well, I hope that other people relate to this and that they, even in finding my own voice, because it's blocked my voice, all of this lack of self-expression, um, I hope that through finding my own voice that, uh, you know, it, it, it speaks for others as well. You are helping others. I think that's what I said during the break. This is, this is I know how hard this is, but, but I think I personally feel an obligation. You know, this fame is, is we have a platform. If we can help exactly. other people, if we can be yeah. an example and be a story for somebody out, out there to, to have the strength and say, well, if they did it, I can do it. So you the are doing that. The platform make, you know, this platform is, is it's great. It's fantastic. But it's so much more meaningful to use it for a deeper meaning, a deeper personal meaning. For me, I'm grateful for my life. I'm grateful for the father that I had. This is a man who 
I mean, it's hard. You have to re read the book. I'm not saying that to sell the book because I'm not here um, to to promote and ent the entertaining side of my life. This is the personal side of my life, and I'm sharing it with you for for very genuine and sincere reasons. But my father was a beautiful man. Both my parents were. They, you know, bad things happen to good people. Uh, when it comes to my parents, my dad tried his hardest to overcome his own problems and issues and his own suffering silence. And the outcome, unfortunately, was the cycle did not get broken. Mm -hmm. And, uh, you know, the children had to su suffer through it, and so did my mother. Right? And had, had he, had someone confronted him, if you could have worked through it in some kind of anger management or something to get it out another way, because you said he was a beautiful man, he just had that one issue where he couldn't control himself. Um, exactly. uh, we have to go, but quickly, uh, I know you, you said that it's, it's affected your voice and you, you haven't been able to sing since all this happened, um, so it's taking a physical as, as well as a, an emotional t toll on you. Do you think you will sing again? Yes, I will sing again, absolutely. <laughs> yeah. We want to see you sing again. <laughs> we want to hear that. You have such a beautiful voice. Thank you. And the more you keep talking about it, the more your voice is going to open up. And I can't wait to hear you sing again. I can't wait. All right, the name of the book is From This Moment On. Everybody in the audience, you're going home with a copy. We'll be back.